40 seconds of round three. Robbie Peden continues to show that he wants to get a little closer to Juan Manuel Marquez. And Marquez treating Peden with caution and respect, but still landing from the outside with the jab and the occasional right hand. There's a right hand over the top by Marquez. Peden has been able to absorb the right hands by Marquez, but I don't know what's going to happen going down the stretch because Marquez has tremendous follow-through on his right hand, and he's landed him at will with the low left hand of Peden, and sooner or later something is going to have to happen, even if it's no more than just a cut or injury. Now, this is exactly what you spoke to Robbie Peden about during the meeting yesterday, Emmanuel, when you said to him, you know, you hold your hands low, and you're going against a big puncher. And he said, yeah, I know. I'm going to have to hold my hands higher. Yeah, and then he said, if I do hold it low, I'll make sure him on the other side of the ring. That was okay during the fighters meeting, but now in the heat of the battle, he's coming in and still is getting hit with those right hands. Well, it's one of the oldest stories in boxing. If you have a habit, and it's a long-standing habit, you may say you'll change for a given fight, but odds are once you're in the ring, you'll do what you've always done. And what as the fighters progress, and now I've seen Peyton has become a little bit more lax, a little wider with his punches, and Marquez has maintained his same level of balance and position. Marquez remembering to go to the body. Robbie Peden had it right. He said Marquez is an excellent fighter. I expect him to be able to lead or follow. And indeed, Marquez can counter when Peden tries to get off, or he can set up his own attack, as he shows you there. Peden has had, probably from what I gather, maybe over 100, maybe close to 200 amateur fights. And as a result, those habits that he's developed, it's going to be very hard to get out of. And normally it would not be that much of a problem, but with a puncher like Marquez, who's also a sharp fighter, it's just a big mistake. Robbie Peden so far has shown that he has the chin to take good stuff. Juan Manuel Marquez. The bad news is that Marquez is landing good stuff. Give me the ice, please. Yeah. Are you are you hurt? Are you sure? Okay. Are you, am I doing okay? You threw in really nice. It's very easy that dummy dominate with the jab. Okay? Stay down low. Stay down low. Stay down low. Come up. Good job, baby. Second job. Hold it tight. Hold it tight. Stay there. Wipe this off his head. Wipe this off his head. That's no good. Put your head down. Good job. Time in. Fuck. Round four begins in Pittsburgh. Crowd here watching this fight as they get ready to cheer for Paul Spatafora in the main event coming next. Harold Letterman, how do you have Marquez and Peden through the first three? Okay, Jim. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Juan Manuel Marquez. Jim, Robbie Peden seems to be just giving Juan Manuel Marquez the opportunities to score, and he's taking every advantage. Beautiful left jabs, hot straight right hands. Robbie Peden keeps those hands too low, as you've been saying. Faints a lot, doesn't punch enough. Marquez just taking advantage of the opportunities presented to him. Emmanuel, what can Peden do to change the fight? I think Peden has to be busy, and he has to jab more, but he should jab with his jab, jabbing a pie. That way he can uh, detect a lot of the right hands that may be coming over. He's he jabbing at Marquez's left eye. The, the thing is, he doesn't utilize his jab too much. The other things he can't change. He fights with his hands too far apart to be fighting a fighter as sharp as Marquez is, but that's not going to change. You see how low Robbie Peden holds his hands as he sets up.
working the corner of Pete, and I noticed that Jim Strickland, one of the best cut men in the business and also the busiest. Uh, he's been working cuts, I think, for the last eight weeks. I've saw him in every fight I've been to, he's working the corner. So he's very much in demand. And also Jeff Lacey, one of our top fighters coming up in the Super Millerway division, is also working as a cornerman for uh, Walter Robert Pete. Jeff Lacey, pull of Roger Bloodworth, who works with Fernando Vargas, works with Lacey, who works with uh, Robbie Peden. Keep the blows up. That's the second time. That's a warning. Keep the blows up. You understand? You understand? That was a warning on him. Stand back. Pop. Probably Bloodworth's prize pupil has been Vargas. Uh, Roger, also, I think he went with Pernell Whitaker. Yep. Some of the other fighters, too. Was in the main Hard right hand by Marquez. Most solid blow of the fight so far. Oh, far. Just when I was going to say that Pete is having one of his better rounds, the right hand lands again. That's a pushing guy. Peyton made an interesting uh, remark to us, which is that he didn't think that Marquez was a confident fighter. Watch and that if you get on top of him, he'll, Watch your heads inside, Bob. he'll back off. He won't be as aggressive. But so far, he just hasn't done enough to bring out that lack of confidence, if it exists. If anything, he's made him a more confident fighter. But now, Marquez has a bloody nose. We gotta use that open cut. Breathe in with through your mouth. Keep using that keep using that, that uppercut. He's almost gone. You winning this fight by a really little margin, but you're winning this fight. Emmanuel, let's take a look at a package of right hands by Marquez. Yes, the right hand has been the signal to punch throughout this entire fight, more so than any other one particular punch, mainly because of the low left hand of Robbie Peden. So Marquez landing there, a lead right hand, landing the right hand behind the jab, landing the right hand countering Peden's left. Every variety, right? Every variety. And even when Peden is jabbing, he jabs with his elbows bending slightly out to the degree that you can land a right hand at the same time that he's going to deliver this jab. That's part of the importance of keeping the elbow straight when you jab, huh? That's very true. With the maximum distance between yourself and the opponent while you land the punch. <laughs> Jabs through round four, incidentally. Marquez, 35 out of 95 by CompuBox estimate. Heaton only 12 out of 83. Heaton averaging only 38 punches per round, so Marquez has been able to limit Heaton's activity somewhat by landing all those right hands that you saw in the replay package, and there's another right hand over the top by Juan Manuel Marquez. You know, coming into the fight, primarily everyone is expecting Marquez, respecting him primarily for his big punching power, but he's shown a great display of boxing talents today, which has impressed me also. I don't recall him um, being willing to back up, move forward, change up. Uh, he's become a more complete fighter uh, over the last couple of years. Well, he has a good sparring partner probably than his younger brother. <laughs> <laughs> we asked him if he felt uh, any friendly competition with his brother, that now that his brother has suddenly emerged as a serious fighter in his division, does he feel any pressure to perform? Um, but he wouldn't bite. No. He doesn't feel that as the big brother, he has to be the big brother. That was a good example of good balance right there. He threw a looping right hand, missed it, and was still in position where he could come back with a left hook at the same time. You can see Marquez beckoning Peden to come forward. I, I 
was listening in the corner to Nacho Berenstein advising Marquez to shoot more uppercuts, but when you shoot uppercut as a lead punch running in like that, you're leaving yourself wide open to get caught with a counter punch at the same time, and it's very dangerous. I was surprised for him to tell him to shoot that. Just ask Buster Douglas, who tried an uppercut against Evander Holyfield and found himself flat on his back giving away the heavyweight championship. That's right. Straight right hand will always be the uppercut when you shoot as a lead punch. There's a left hook for Marquez. Momentarily snapping Peden's head back, and now combination punches from Marquez, and Peden flurries with a counter barrage of his own. Right hand landing flush again for Marquez. Well, one thing's for sure, Peden can take a punch, particularly a right hand punch. Partially because he is a proud Mexican, Juan Manuel Marquez says if he wins this fight, he doesn't necessarily want to accept the title shot against IBF title holder Manuel Medina, which is the prize at stake here. He'd rather fight for the WBC crown, which at the moment belongs to Eric Morales. Let's take a look at the top fighters in the division, Larry, as Morales and Barrera get ready to square off against each other again. Barrera and Morales still regarded as 1-2. Hamed making his comeback in a couple of weeks. Smoke Gaynor has a title, but hasn't fought in more than a year. There's Marquez and Paulie Ayala, who is uh, being groomed to fight uh, Barrera or Morales, whoever wins their showdown in June. You let them get too close to and if Robbie Peden can upset Juan Manuel Marquez, he would move into the list, but right now, Peden's getting busted up. 